People Station 107 Jams. What up, y'all? It's Big Boy Chills, the Tidy Night Show. And I got a special guest and shout out to the show tonight, man. I met him last year. And I having the chance to meet him once again, man. Free Ray Rick Ross is in the building. What's up, homie? Oh, man, I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'll t- tell you behind the scenes, man. You look like one of my uncles, man. <laughs> I'll show you a picture. You'd be like, is that my twin? <laughs> What's going on, man? What brings you back to the city? Man, working hard, working hard. We're going to be doing a book signing tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, down in my man Mike's shop. Um, You're going to be on um, Legendary Sports on Broad Street, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know that. So, and what time y'all popping that off? About 2 o'clock or 1. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. We're going to be popping off at 1, okay. you know. So people get to come out there and. Yeah, come out and get the book, you know what I'm saying, get an autograph, take some pictures, you know. Also down there for Boosie, too, you know. Me yeah. and Boosie had our first face-to-face, you know. I used to talk to him when he was locked up. Yeah. Uh, you know, gave him some game, gotcha. you know what I'm saying, while he was gone. and uh, I seen a few pictures uh, on my timeline on Instagram, <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, that was our first time hooking up, you know, even though he'd been home for a year now, I think. Uh, but while he was gone, you know, I was one that was taking his calls, even though I wasn't supposed to. You know, my oh. P.O. had told me don't take no more calls from jail, but uh, Boosie was the one I had to break the rules on, yeah. you know, because I, I knew he was special. Uh, and I really, really, really wanted to get my hands in on his career and uh, not only his career, but the way he's thinking and, and, and the way he's moving. So, uh, you know, we're we going to put some things together now. I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, uh, matter of fact, I talked to the guy who did the a movie Minister Society. He wrote mm-hmm. He wrote the script. Spoke to him today, uh, so uh, we're going to start writing that movie script for Boosie. Okay. Life story, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's been talking about it, so it's time for it to manifest it's, itself. It's all, it already started. He gave me the green light today to, to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start working on his book, his autobiography. He saw mine, you know, mine independently done. I own yeah. it. Uh, I got a couple investors, you know what I'm saying, but it's my book. You know, the lion's share of the money go to me. And I know that feels good because you got a big smile on your face <laughs> when you talk about it. <laughs> it is, man, because, you know, so often, you know, uh, it's crazy. You know, they just did a survey on blacks, how bad we're doing financially. And, uh, you know, we got so many people that uh doing things and, and they being made to look like, you know, they're doing really well and they really not doing that well. That's why they can't come back and really help the community, you know, because it's not really their money. Yeah. Uh, and and with me, it's it's like I can get my books to do is to go out on the street and sell. I can give them a discount on it, you know. And and it's just crazy that that I'm able to do that. And uh, you know, people that I thought was in a much better position than I am, uh, than I was, uh, I found out they can't do things like that. You know, they can't yeah. give them they they records or they uh, clothes or, or whatever it is. They can't allow our people to sell their product. And, and I think that's one of our biggest problems is that we can't get a product. You know, the product that we can get is, is illegal mm-hmm. and, and there's no ceiling on that. And, and that's why so many young black men turn, you know, to drugs and crime because those are the uh, avenues that mainstream society has opened up for them. Uh, so uh, I want to try to get together with, you know, guys like Boosie who are doing pretty good for themselves and get them to know that they got to come back to the hood and, and, take some of the wealth that the hood gave him yeah. because the hood, you know, the hood love Boosie. You know, I, I was at the show last night and I saw how much love they showed him and, and they made him who he is today. Yeah. And, and he should never forget that. And he should always come back to the hood and, and try to lift the hood up. And, and that's something that we deal with here, man. A lot of times people do shows and they don't necessarily manifest themselves. And for it to, you know, for, for people to see him there last night, I know a lot of people was, was happy with that. And he, he's always, he, he loved Louisiana. Oh to the yeah, core. yeah, yeah. Well, he he but, he he a street dude. I mean, he he loved being around the people and, and everything. But uh, you know, we just got to get our people to know, man. When they go out and make it, they gotta come back. Yeah. You know, so often uh, when they get with these other people, they being taught, you know, that you shouldn't go around the hood. The hood is dangerous. They don't like you. You know, they are gonna take everything you got, and and it's not really like that. You know, if 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 you help feed the hood, the hood gonna take care of you. Yeah. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit, like, what, what's what's the book about? Man, this is my autobiography, man. This is the story, all the questions everybody asks me. How you do it? How you do it? Yeah. How did this happen? How did you get out of jail with a life sentence? It's in the book. Uh, how I started with $125 and, and built up my empire to, you know, some days I made $3 million. Uh, it's in the book. Not to be bragging about what I did, uh, but I believe that the same skills that I use to sell drugs can be used to do anything. I mean... Can, that's how I'm doing the things that I'm doing right now. You know, uh, 
my documentary is in in the can um we don't know if it's gonna come out in february or not yet but uh i got several tv channels that's negotiating on it uh i just been doing a lot of things man and, and people are gonna really be surprised uh when when this tree uh finally pops up out the ground you know i got the seed in the ground right now i've been yeah. watering you really can't see what's happening uh because i don't really you know come out and show you know really what i'm doing but uh but six years that I've been out, I think I made a lot of progress. Yeah. I had a question. Why is it that when people come from, you know, where you came from to do the things you've done in your life to serve time and come out, it's like they think sometimes like you're not supposed to progress and do better things in life. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, you know, why, people, why, why do they, people you know? like to beat you down, you know, when, when you, when you, when you, when you've committed a crime, you know, people want you to stay, uh, at a level to never, never rise again. But, uh, uh, I think it should be totally the opposite, you know, being down and, and beat down uh, makes me want to fight harder to prove that uh, that I'm just as good as anybody else and that I can compete with anybody else. And, yeah. you know, that's one of the things that, you know, people are saying about my book because I didn't know what uh, my uh, main purpose and focus in the book was. But uh, from what I'm getting right now, people are telling me that the book says uh, never quit, never give up, you know, no matter how low you are, uh, you can always fight back. So this this is number two, right? Your second book? No, this is my first this one. Your first book? I did I did a fiction book when I was when I was going with a uh, with a guy named Jimmy the Saint called Black Scarface, and then I did the forward on a uh, how to sell drugs and win. Okay. Uh, um, but uh, these are the my this is my autobiography. Those okay. are not my books. They were somebody else's books. Okay. Uh, that I uh, participated in. I liked what they was doing with them, and uh, and I participated in. Okay, so now, so now that's your your big thing. Now you're heavy with the books, the author, and yeah. the, the movies are next. And man, documentary. You know, uh, I produced a documentary. I got I got a reality show that we we just pitched to uh, MTV. Uh, I'll be working on Preachers of Atlanta. I'll okay. be one of the producers on there. Uh, what else I got going on? Uh, Holland L. L. Cool J. Me and him talking about doing a, a workout show okay. you know where we're gonna show people how to get fit and he gonna show me how to get my get rid of my stomach i got that <laughs> stomach now i was trying to get back to where i was when <laughs> i got out so uh, uh uh me and him talking about doing a uh it was my idea i came up with the idea you know because i know how uh many people really uh look up to ll for his workout ethics and, and they want to know how did he get so big yeah so uh me and him have been talking he came and saw my documentary uh when we screened it at la film school and he was like unk you killed it man yeah he said you finna shock the, the doc is gonna shock the country uh because we kind of lay out all the things that's been happening now with uh, uh the militarization of the police force mm -hmm. we show how they use drugs to get to the point that we at right now because uh a lot of people have been made to believe that drug dealers were so violent and so ruthless uh uh and that the police needed more firearms and and more uh uh army like tactics and what they did is they build up and now they're using these same tactics because they mauled down the drug uh, uh aspect of, of society drugs ain't like they used to be then now they're using them just for normal citizens yeah and then you know they say all of us look alike you know so they'll see a kid like trayvon martin or, or michael brown who i mean you know they dress like little wayne and yeah. everybody else but they become thugs, you know, or thug lookalikes, you could yeah. say, even though they may not be a thug, they may be going to college, but they wear their pants sagging and, you know, and they like beanies and they like hoodies. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you automatically <laughs> look like a thug yeah. and, and that makes you a suspect. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I worry about myself. You know, I'm a college graduate, but I still like, I'm hip hop, you know, I like my, 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 my pullovers and you still get those well, side you, eyes when well, you, you know go to when, certain places. You know, when they see you, you a yeah. thug. <laughs> They don't know you. They don't know you work at one oh seven point one oh seven jams. Yeah, they, they don't know that know the education. They don't know what I'm driving. No, the first thing is that. thug. Yeah, the first thing popping their mind is thug. So when they pull that gun out, you know, the hand on the trigger, you know, it's just dangerous for all of our kids and and all of us until you know this mindset changes. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the biggest one, and they work in, in the White House. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's real. That's well, they gonna see, they gonna see when they see my doc. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They gonna see old Reagan uh, holding up a bag of crack cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> we got some, we got some footage. Ain't nobody never seen or don't remember seeing. I never remember seeing Ronald Reagan holding up a bag of crack cocaine, nor George Bush. And and we yeah. got both of them on film. 
holding up uh, bags of crack cocaine. So it's going to be uh, something that this it's going to shock America to see the things that uh, we were able to put together in this documentary. And, and I believe it's a tribute uh, the way I wanted this documentary to be like a tribute to the black man and let him know that some of the stuff that he's fighting against right now ain't accidental and, and he didn't create it, you know, because sometimes we get to thinking like I used to think that I'm the reason I sold drugs. You know, it was all my fault and I put myself in this position where once you see this documentary, you're going to find out it just might not be all on you. That it might have been somebody in a higher place that had his hand in, in what you was doing uh, with the manipulation of the system. Yeah. Okay. So once again, uh, tomorrow. The six. I'm still getting used to the fact that it's a new year <laughs> right now. You know, it's like counting on your fingers. I'm looking at the date on the clock over there. But uh, you're gonna be at the barbershop. Yeah, this one and Mike. We're gonna be at Legendary Sports Clips at 1425 Broad Street, Sweet A, across from Jim Seafood, next to More for Less. We're gonna be there. Yeah, we're gonna edit all that out. <laughs> until, you know, I gotta tell him because I'll be like, where on Broad We're gonna keep Street? you in, but everybody else gotta get it edited out. <laughs> <laughs> free advertising. No, yeah. No. Only thing free on this interview right now is freeway. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> but uh, you yeah, gonna be there all day tomorrow doing a book signing, you know? I want to come holler, down. come holler, take some pictures. You know what I'm saying? Just holler at your boy. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what's going on with you, late Charles. I don't know when I'm ready to get back down here. My schedule been hectic, but I'm loving it. All right, man. Well, in the building, Freeway Rick Ross is in town, man. Always a pleasure to have you here, man. And uh, keep it locked. People Station 107 Jams, 107jams.com. With Freeway Rick Ross. Had to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue tied right there. But before we get you out of here, man, you know, you got to give people your social media and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can get me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them at uh, Freeway Ricky with the Y, Freeway Ricky. And uh, also be looking out for my artist, Blue Marley. He's killing it right now. Okay. Well, uh, when's the, the documentary? When's it coming out? You got we shoot for yet? February. It's going to be coming out and look like on Al Tazir. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right now, they the highest bitter <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so be looking for what it's called freeway cracking the system matter of fact you can see the trailer right now just to give you a sneak peek of what you're going to be looking at okay well cool we'll try to get it up at 107jams.com for you man once again we appreciate you coming through much man. love much love all right it's the people station 107 jams with freeway rick ross on 107 jams